I will open the school committee at uh, 4.02. Um, the first order of business is review and approve minutes from 3.14 and 3.28. Any changes, updates, anything to the minutes? Can I have a vote to approve uh, 3.14 and 3.28 minutes? I'll vote yep. to approve the minutes uh, from 3.14 and 3.28. Motion, thank you. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Do we do we need to do um, one at a time, Darius? Yeah, it's your roll call vote when you're virtual. Okay, roll call. Uh, Denise? Yes. Michael? Yes. Jared? Yes. And I'm yes also. There we go. Uh, financial statements, are you doing that, Darius? It, technically, so this is the, uh, it's gonna, we're gonna table that because A, Shelly can't be with us and two, this is part of the joint meeting. And so uh, Jen threw this, the general. Uh, okay. I should have edited that out because it, she doesn't have a financial statement for today. Yep, no but problem. Can get it in like two weeks, next yeah. regular schedule. Yep, no problem. Right. Uh, Kristen did send us a principal's report. Kristen, you wanna go over that? Elaine, I have a question. Um, on the minutes that Jen Shumway sent, that uh, sent me to fill in, it says that we need approval of the minutes from March 14th and approval of the minutes from March 28th. I don't know if that's a mistake or not. I know it was too. And I, I actually just did them both together. You did them both together. Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying, I was trying to figure out remote and taking minutes. My yeah. apologies. 314 was I think in okay. person that 328 was the, what was it? Was Budget. budget hearing. Oh, the budget hearing. Yeah. But that um, wasn't 328, though. That was the same meeting. 314. I think they were both on the budget, weren't they? 14 and 18 to 28? Well, 314 was when I was at the Celtics game. So that was the meeting. What was 328? The budget vote. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, right. Is this Phil 1904? Do we know? Because I, I hear a background like. I looked that up in the minutes and it was a very short, unfinished budget meeting vote. Yeah. Yes. That, right. That was our last meeting, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look up and see if that's Phil because I have his phone number in my. Oh, it's muted now. No, Phil's got a 413. So, unknown who that is. Okay. So, we have the principal's report? Yeah. Principal's report. Yeah, so real quickly, I sent everyone, um, mostly it was an uh, update on things that have happened or things coming up. Some highlights, uh, we've invited 32 students to our summer program. We have about 28 that have responded yes so far. Um, so we're just going to reach out to the other four, which is great. Um, May Day, if anyone's available tomorrow, we have our May Day celebration, which is really awesome. The Morris dancers will come and some of our students will perform as well. I always love that. It's the best. Um, our 5, 5K and Spring Fling are Sunday, this coming Sunday, May 5th. Uh, May 5th. 5K starts at 9 o'clock, Spring Fling starts at 11 o'clock, and you can't believe the things that the PTO has for the Spring Fling. You know, animals and presenters is going to be really great. Cool. Nature's, nature's Classroom, 6th grade will be on their way to Nature's Classroom next week, Tuesday to Friday. Um, and the last thing is I was able to take a um, course that I absolutely love. Um, and so just thank you for the committee and um, certainly, Darius, for supporting professional development. Really appreciate that. Awesome. Hopefully, you all got to review that. Any any questions, comments? Spring is such a fun time. It's awesome. Looking forward to the 5K. Um, I like that. Is the zoo trip to the, the Rhode Island Zoo that we always do? Yes, end of May. We still oh, have that. Right. We love our traditions and we just keep our traditions and keep adding. I got to chaperone that one. It was super fun. fun one. Yeah. All righty. Um, 
no public for comment except 904, whoever that is. Um, and unfinished business. So the school calendar we were sent. Um, any comments about differences or anything, Darius? So um, this one is one that's difficult. Um, you get to vote it, but you really will cause a lot of problems if you don't vote for the um, non two week break. They're coming back on the second um, for the calendar year because that's what the joint committee voted. That's the difference between the two calendar options. One has a two week break at, during the Christmas break and one has us coming back on Thursday. Okay. The discussion there was that um, it's a long break for families with a limited income and um, child care and that kind of thing. And those families with means who wanna take two weeks can certainly just do that. Um, well, those who can't are going to be and then special ed services being for two weeks longer on all that stuff is is may not be healthy was the conversation not my opinion i'm recalling last time the calendar came up for conway that we were leaning towards the shorter christmas break that in a survey to the parents we did not do one okay wait what did you say about the joint meeting Darius that they voted it the two week break no they voted the coming back on the second the short In, break. the shorter break if we shorter. if we depart from that we have a bunch of logistical issues transportation etc so I mean I, I make a motion that we go with the shorter holiday break calendar uh, and match the rest of the district I'll second that okay all in favor uh, Michael yes Barrett Yes. Denise? Yes. Uh, and I'm also a yes. I guess I'll cave to majority rule. <laughs> um, and the school committee calendar vote. Yep, again, we all have, we have to work together to make sure that your um, uh, meetings are not the same time as other people's meetings. You can kind of go through, I try to rotate things around so not everybody has the first or second meeting when we stack them. You always can call a meeting at any time for, you know, just following the rules of following a meeting at any time you wish. But this is just to coordinate the multi-meeting schedule that we have so that people can plan in advance. Um, again, you know, looking at it again, the uh, same idea of how we went through budget season where you have single nights for that and then a double meeting in March um, to do a public hearing, then vote the budget on a different date. And just like we did this year, I would assume that we continue to try to do that second one virtual because it's such a quick meeting. If everything's running smoothly, if it's not running smoothly, we'll have a meeting in person. All right. Yep, fine with me. Oh, and Denise doesn't care since she's leaving us. I'm in support of whatever you want. <laughs> I did not know that we were having an upcoming vacancy. Yes. I didn't know that either, Denise. <laughs> Well, we appreciate all you've uh, you snuck been out. part of this. Yeah. <laughs> so last meeting, we have to all go out. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Which does mean you're going to need a new collaborative member. It's true. Just when you're oh, totally up to speed, too. That always happens. Because <laughs> that's, that's a big thing to wrap your mind around. I've done it before. We can cross that bridge in June, though, and yeah. we'll have mm -hmm. our when we have our meeting, so. All righty. I've done uh, it before, just as a. Can I get a motion for the school committee meeting calendar? I'll make a motion to approve the school committee meeting calendar. And a second? I'll second it. All right, roll call, Michael. Yes. Jared? Yes. Denise? Yes. And myself, yes, also. Uh, we're on to the superintendent's evaluation. Um, I'm assuming everybody else Pass this. Yep, it was. There was just a, a nice recap. Um, there's a, some documents that were uh, available out there. Um, I so love all the pie pie charts. Pie charts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love color. <laughs> there you go. Um, any discussion? Not for me. Uh, okay. 
uh, can I get a motion to approve the superintendent's evaluation? I'll make a motion to approve the evaluation. As and possible. second. I'll second it. All right, all in favor, uh, Denise? Yes. Jared? Yes. Michael? Yes. And myself. And thank you for your service, Darius. We appreciate it. I love how you get you get toasted one week and then you get like, you know, front page news the next week. That's just the superintendent's job. It's the, the roller coaster of this job. Yep, that's it. All right, transportation contract. That's another one we really don't have much to say about, right? Unless Conway wants to go out and bid its own contract. Yeah. We don't have I'm sure they would be jumping at that, huh? <laughs> Find another vendor between our roads and uh, everything else. Yeah, sure. All right. Can I get a motion to approve the uh, transportation contract? I'll make a motion to approve the transportation contract. All right. And a second. I second it. All right. Denise. Yes. Jared. Yes. Michael. Yes. And I'm a yes. <clears throat> All right. PD plan for 24-25. Was that handout as part of the? Man, I don't remember. I think it was just a presentation on the screen, Darius. Uh, I may have dropped the ball on that. Um, so they gave a, uh, Laura and Sarah both gave a presentation of the PD plan. Um, and were you waiting, Kristen? Oh, I was going to say, I actually pretty much have memorized what we're doing. So if you need to. Jump in. Jump in. It'll okay. save me from filling air. Okay, so this year we started um, with the ELA program. Some people are dipping their feet into even in doing even the Bridges Math program, um, but next year um, a lot of the a lot of the PD is going to be centered around the new math program, Bridges, um, and the intervention. In addition, we're going to have some PD with a strong fo focus on social emotional, um, bringing back responsive classroom, um, looking at the new second step curriculum. Uh, which is will be a mandated curriculum within the district. And the new second step curriculum looks great. And then in January, we're actually going to have, da -da -da, drum roll, Lynn Lyons come to the district and speak to the district. So we're really excited about that. We have a, a November date plan for um, anti-racism, diversity. Um, so we have a PD planned on that. So, uh, you know, all very timely and very, very needed and um, we're excited to get going with our people are tired, but excited to get going with the math curriculum. The you know the ELA is a much heavier lift. People have dipped into the math, um, are really enjoying it, and the the feedback has been very positive. So um, that is an, I just presented this Darius, so I thought okay, yeah. So. Sounds good. That's awesome. Thank you, Kristen, for jumping in. Um, so now we're on to resolution in favor of rural aid, and we need a vote for that. You want to give a summary, Darius? Yeah, so basically, um, I don't know if you saw that the uh, House came out with um, cutting rural aid. The governor's budget had it at uh, level funding, and the House came out with its budget, cutting it back to cutting it in half. And this is just basically... Because um, we don't exist past Worcester. Exactly. Um, only 1% of the um, the most needy rural and declining um, districts are re they're only receiving one cent percent of the new SOA funding, and basically, um, you know, they're right now they're pushing for the per child per pupil um, uh, uh, reimbursement to the to, to towns to one hundred and five or one hundred and three dollars, up from thirty which is in the governor's budget, but that doesn't help us. For people, doesn't help us. The rural aid is what helped us. So they're trading that out politically, and it doesn't it doesn't add up to anywhere near. So we're going to get a few thousand dollars more outside of what we were getting before was close to $30,000. So, um, so we want to get that rural aid back. And so this is basically, this is now being taken on by, our, by the MASC. Um, and they just want to get everybody's backing behind it so they can say they have it. How come when anybody runs for office, they talk about how important rural aid is, and then the moment they have a chance to cut it, they do? Well, we hear it around here, they're saying that. They're not saying that out east. And so our legislators are very much involved and very much pushing these kind of things. And, um, you know, and hats off to them. They, they have fought 
um, very hard for it. The problem is you know, your political power of, you know, we have one rep that oversees like, what, 12 towns, you know, and so you go out east and you got one per every two or three towns. So right. you, know, you got to get them to buy into um, giving us a few million dollars. Yeah. All righty. Can I have a motion to uh, pass the resolution in favor of rural aid? I'll make a motion to support the resolution uh, resolution for rural aid. And a second? I'll second it. All right. Uh, Denise? Yes. Uh, Jared? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I'm also in favor. Um, resolution to support lowering municipal voting age to 16 in our four towns. I'm sorry I missed the discussion on this because it's kind of fascinating. It was interesting. It was interesting. I want to give a recap, Jared. Um, so there are some students at Frontier. You know, the frontal lobe isn't fully developed to like 24, by the way, right? Well, <laughs> it doesn't stop 18 year olds, but um, there are, I don't know that's fully developed for me either. I'm 40 something. So um, <laughs> uh, there's some students at Frontier along with support of a few um, um, either school committee leads and others around the district uh, leading this initiative. Um, even if the towns vote for it, it still needs to go uh, to the state um, before it would actually go into effect. Um, it's coming up at each of our town meetings uh, for vote. They got the signatures. And this on our, our agenda is to put our support as school committee behind it. Um, I was probably one of a few voices to, to be opposed to the school committee having a say in it. I just don't see that it be is our place um, to, to, to be supportive or not supportive of this. It's just out, to me, it's outside our purview. Um, but it was brought up that um, the MASC is in support of it. So, you know, I can still have my opinion that maybe they're off base, but I uh, just, I'll, I'll give the counter argument that, that that is their support is in place for it. So. Darius, I don't know what if I missed it. I tried to get short, short and sweet on the recap, but it was a lot more discussion than that. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it was a. If you read the paper tomorrow, because of that, uh, we've had two town meetings already, and it's already been up. So Sunderland was um, it passed in Sunderland, and um, there was some discussion on it. Um, the Sunderland town meeting was not well attended, um, so um, there was some discussion, but the kind of the mood of the room was was not. Um, like it was at Deerfield. Let's just put it that way. Deerfield, it was very lively discussion. Um, and the discussion was cut short when you, someone yelled out, call the question. And I want to say discussion it was getting pretty heated debate of whether or not that people should be allowed, that students should be allowed to do that. And so, um, but anyway, so it, and it did not pass there by only a few votes. I think it was three votes um, in Deerfield. So, um, yeah, so I think you have different people with uh, different opinions on it. There's certainly it's politics. Um, um, and you have the arguments of getting students, getting kids involved earlier to make them understand democracy. And then the counter argument, I think it was said nicely in Sunderland, was the town meeting is not a classroom, it is a place of business. Um, there's a lot of interesting backs and forths on that. So, um, you know, I think. Um, I understand the, the politics behind that as well. Younger voters are more liberal, older voters are more conservative, who attends most town meetings. So, you know, it's that kind of, um, those kind of those kind of discussions happening. Um, there's talk about, you know, if you can get students involved and it makes them more alive in their community before they go off to college at 18. 18 is not a good year to start voting because many times they're not part of their own community. So those are all the different kind of things that were said um, I mean, I also worry about stacking the deck. You know, Jared has more kids than I do. He can like make them all like, you know, line up and and vote in in his order when you know, uh, if if they would, you know, they wouldn't listen um, to him. <laughs> right, they wouldn't listen to him, right? But anyway, it is. And, and I do appreciate the idea of getting people and young people involved sooner. But I brought my, I brought my kids to town meeting to let them doesn't mean they have to vote, but I don't know. I guess we need a vote either way. Do you guys? You, you can do one of three options. You can you cannot take action too. I, it's what do you all? Because it's being voted on in the town, right? It's being, it or? 
It's being it's voted being, on at the town, but they're also looking for our vote as a school committee. Looking for our vote, yes. like our, our resolution to support or not. And, you know, I, I'll candidly, I, at the Frontier meeting, I abstained from voting because I don't think it's our place to have a say in it. Um, Can we just table it? Is it because it's they have to be a student, obviously, which kids are students. But, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how it ties back to us and... I, I, yeah, I, I get their gonna... students, but it's well, not, not I, I in the school. MESC, well, I guess MESC doesn't mean it's your association, but you're right, it's dealing with kids that are outside your age group. But I guess if you would look at the MASC, would look at it as it's part of the educational experience. Okay. That we promote students, activists in our community, and you guys are leaders of students. It's not the proper age group, so I could see that that could get kind of wishy-washy, but... Um, I mean, my personal, you, yeah. you know. I mean, if we can tailor, my personal opinion is the education can happen without the vote. I mean, that's just my personal. Yeah, no, I'm kind of with you. Like, and technically, I don't feel uh, strongly about it. For better or worse, a student at age 16 <laughs> could unenroll from public school and still be, like, they they wouldn't necessarily be part of a school community if they've decided to. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if it was 14 year olds, they're mandated by law to attend school, as far as I understand. But at age 16, that mandate fades, and students have some control over whether they continue. So, is this to, to encourage them to go to school so they can vote? I, I don't think so. <laughs> no, you don't have to. No, it's just the, it's by age. It does not have to do with the night you attend school. If you're home, okay. oh, so it has nothing to do but with. I'll, I'll throw I mean, another curveball that I was going to say last night, but I was like, I'm not going to blow him up at this Deerfield meeting. But do 250 Deerfield Academy students get to vote at town meeting? It's not just that town meeting; it's any ballot vote. So if you have, and if you know, so if Denise was to run again, she could get all the students to vote for her. You know that you know what I mean if she you know that kind of thing. So it's voting, it's ballot votes that are not state or federal stuff. So anything that's in town, you know, if you guys wanted to put money toward, you know, if it was a ballot vote to do an override, it would be on that thing. Which, from my perspective, I would like students to be able to vote because that helps us with the override, right? You know, that if we if we were wanted, to I don't want to get people confused. I'm totally fine with just tabling it. <clears throat> Are you guys good with tabling it? Oh, I am good with tabling it. We're Table just it. we're just taking a pass. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, discussion for onboarding and support for new school committee members. I think I went to a meeting about this, Darius. <laughs> yes, and so that was brought up by um, the chairs again about um, just putting together something to help new uh, school committee members on board. And whether or not people would be interested in being mentors to somebody in a different district in of our four of our five districts so that you know you could mentor somebody from like Sunderland or something like that to ask questions and that kind of stuff without worrying about open meeting law and without worrying about your own town politics you could say you know you know I don't understand when they talk about the budget regarding this or I don't you know I have a parent who contacted me and I don't know if I'm supposed to bring it to the superintendent because they were complaining about the superintendent. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know, like, we, what am I supposed to do with stuff? You know, that kind of thing. Stuff that isn't sometimes found in the handbook, I get is there. So they're trying to be more supportive across the board. I mean, to me, the, it's, I don't mind the idea. It's just also each school committee has its own culture and its own flow. Like, so. I don't know. This yeah, one, I, mean, I don't. Did they vote that, Jared? I don't remember. Did they vote that? I don't think it was a vote. I don't think it was a vote. Ah, me. No, they didn't. Not a vote. I think they're just talking about it. Everybody's like, sure. Yeah. I mean, a relatively new school committee member, having someone that, to bounce ideas off or, or just to, if you like, hey, am I supposed to do this in a meeting or that kind of stuff? Like, it doesn't hurt anything. It just, I and no vote required. It was just, it was just more discussion. And, yeah. And that, being supportive of each other is never a bad thing. They may set up a new superintendent, new superintendent, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see how the spring goes. Um, they may set up a new um, school committee member, like onboarding meeting to run by um, school committee members. 
instead of the onboarding that I do, where I kind of go through things and the handbook that we created and that kind of stuff, it's a one more step. And it, I mean, the other like, thing is if people went to the fall conference, you know, there's a lot of new school committee member guidance there. And I, I think it's just a great thing for people to do. I know it's hard for some people to get away from families and work and whatever, but and there's I'm, I'm at the other end of that now. So, right. And then this is an onboarding class as well that they're supposed to take. There's not, yeah. they're not bound by law to take it, but they're supposed yeah. to take it. You know, but All right. Well, we're, we're happy to keep up discussions about it. How about that? There you go. Okay. Um, anything else we need to cover? Any reports? No. All right. Thanks. Sorry we didn't have a quorum at the last thing. You know, me and my sports fandom is just gets in the way sometimes. Usually March, which is not a good time, but because um, it's my birthday. But then I, as the home opener for the Sox, which was wicked cool, by the way. Nice. Uh, 2014 was there and then I planned on calling it on the way home and didn't have a charger and phone just kicked on me and I was like felt very bad about it but sorry sorry to leave you hanging you no problem but it was fun <laughs> good <laughs> yeah. all right can I get a motion to adjourn I'll make a motion to adjourn all right second all second all right uh all in favor all right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. I'll see you all Bye. soon. Okay.